Islam is here to stay, it's not going anywhere, and it is rapidly increasing. And it's the only religion that was ever created to deny the fact that Jesus is God. Many Muslims make the claim that the Quran is the written word of God, meanwhile the Bible is somehow corrupted and not the word of God. But once we read the Quran together, you're going to realize that this is no written word from God, but actually the written words of Lucifer himself. What's going on guys, it's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Did you know that the Quran proves that Islam was written by Satan? When Muhammad received revelation to write the Quran, he claimed that he was visited by angel Gabriel when he went to a cave to worship Allah. The great miracle of Islam is that although Muhammad was illiterate and couldn't read or write, his writings were of divine nature because the supposed angel helped him write it. However, in Sahih al-Bukhari 3, we learn that this angel pinned Muhammad to the ground three times in a row to the point where Muhammad felt physical pain to where his body couldn't bear it anymore. And he ended up being forced to write what this angel told him to. Let's read it together and you tell me if you think that this is the nature of what a holy angel would do to a human being. The commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's messenger was in the form of good dreams which came true like bright daylight. And then the love of seclusion was bestowed upon him. He used to go in seclusion in the cave of Hira where he used to worship Allah alone continuously for many days before his desire to see his family. He used to take with him the journey food for the stay and then come back to his wife Khadija to take his food likewise again till suddenly the truth descended upon him while he was in the cave of Hira. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read, or what shall I read? Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me, and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord, who has created all that exists, created man from a clot, read, and your Lord is the most generous. So we see here in the hadiths that this angel pinned Muhammad to the ground and bullied him into submission until he wrote what the angel commanded him to. This encounter is what birthed the lie to Muhammad that he was receiving revelation from God and that he was a prophet of God. However, when we examine the violent and cruel nature of this angel, we can clearly see that this was a fallen angel and not an angel from the heavens above. This fallen angel traumatized Muhammad in such a severe way that the rest of the Hadith explains that he was afraid something bad was going to happen to him when he returned home to his wife Khadija. Let's read the rest of it together. Then Allah's messenger returned with the inspiration and with his heart beating severely. Then he went to Khadija and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over and after that he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Khadija replied, never, but Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. You keep good relations with your kith and kin, help the poor and the destitute, serve your guests generously and assist the deserving calamity afflicted ones. This violent demonic encounter that Muhammad had, which he thought was the angel Gabriel, is what sparked the idea that Islam is the true revelation from God. However, the angel Gabriel recorded in the Bible is not an angel that used violent force, but rather an angel that spoke positive and comforting words to the Virgin Mary, letting her know that she is favored by God and telling her to not be afraid. When Mary received the revelation from the angel Gabriel in Luke 1.26-35, we notice a total opposite demeanor. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Well, would you look at that? Instead of pinning Mary to the ground and demanding that she accepts revelation from God by forceful physical submission, the angel Gabriel visits Mary, uplifts her, as well as comforting her by letting her know not to be afraid of this supernatural encounter. What sounds more like an angel to you? 
violence or peace. Now back in the Hadith, we see that the angel Gabriel that Muhammad claims to depict leaps on Muhammad and overpowers him. This type of behavior proves that this was a satanic fallen angel because the Bible shows us in Acts 19, 13 through 16 that a demon operating through a man leaped on and overpowered an exorcist in a very similar way. In this part of the scripture, the Jews were trying to cast out demons in the same way that Jesus' apostles did. However, it was not effective for them because they truly didn't have faith in the power of Jesus. And they were more so trying to mimic the apostles to see if this whole thing was cap or if Jesus really was God. So they didn't really have their heart or their faith in it. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this, but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. You can clearly see that the exact nature of this demon that attacked the Jews that were trying to do an exorcism correspond with the same behavior that Muhammad recorded when he documents his experience with this fallen angel that attacked him in the cave. It's pretty obvious that Muhammad was deceived by Satan to create Islam through one of his fallen angels. As we read the Quran, we see the immense hostility for two types of people, Jews and Christians. As you know, Jews and Christians have a significant positive role to play in the eyes of God. However, with the information that we now know about the Quran being inspired by a fallen angel, this verse in Surat al Ba'ina 98.6 that says Jews and Christians are the worst of all creatures starts to make a lot more sense. When we read the Quran, we get to read it from the lens of Satan and how he views the people that are significant to God. Although we hear the common fallacy that Muslims believe in Jesus too, the Jesus that they believe in is a lie and it's not what the Bible teaches. The Quran not only denies the crucifixion of Christ, but even insinuates that believing Jesus is God is the only unforgivable sin which is known as shirk. Think about how satanic that is. Muslims are literally gripped with fear even pondering the idea that Jesus may be God because if they do come to that realization, that will mean that Allah will send them to hell for eternity with no forgiveness for them. This is further proof that the Quran was written by the devil himself, who is a master of fear and deception. Regardless of the propaganda, Islam is not a friend of Christianity, but rather a direct satanic opposition to the truth of God's word that can only be found in the Holy Bible. Jesus Christ is the only way to be connected to the true and living God. Because faith in his death and resurrection is the only thing that atones us for the sins that used to separate us from God. Nobody can receive salvation and forgiveness from God apart from Jesus Christ. The whole point of Jesus coming down was to build a very bridge that was broken previously between God and man due to sin. To deny the very act that God made in order to have a relationship with you again and think that you can get to him some different way is the sad deception that many false religions, including Islam, are under. Jesus Christ loves you and he's inviting you into a relationship with the Father. And the enemy will do whatever he can to deny this fact, including creating a whole kind of religion by pinning down an illiterate man in a cave 600 years after the Bible was finished. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you made it all the way to the end, I want you to comment down below, Islam is a lie. If you guys want to financially sow into this ministry, you can do so by checking the offering link in the description, or you can check out the merch which is also linked in the description. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care and peace out. Ain't a game, Jesus who I claim. Yeah, he reigns, cross up on my chain. Brand new lane, heaven my domain. The world I gain, but it ain't doing